If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today as you guys can guess we are talking about this guy. This is the Thrustmaster Viper TQS Mission Pack and uh, we have a lot to talk about you guys. This thing is absolutely incredible. Thrustmaster was kind enough to provide me with a copy of this. Now one thing I'm going to give you guys a heads up that I won't be doing today that I've done in previous videos and you see in just about every video that there is in this particular video I'm not going to be showing you guys any live footage of me in the cockpit using it um, because I just feel like it actually sort of takes away. I'm going to give you guys the raw. I don't want to be experiencing. I don't want to be having fun playing the sim, showing it to you guys. I want you guys to know whether this pack at $529 US uh, is worth it in my book. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it is in my book. This is probably one of the coolest and uh, one of the best products that Thrustmaster has put out for flight simulation in a while. I would say since the TPR rudder pedals and uh, definitely, definitely has a spot in their premium lineup. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. So what I am going to do, guys, is uh, change the camera view a little bit. We're going to zoom in closer on this so I can sort of break a few things down for you guys. And then uh, we'll start talking about uh, the, what, I, what I like, what I dislike, the good, the bad, the ugly, the whole works. So let's go ahead and get after it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started right away here. So first off, the, the Viper uh, soft or the Viper uh, throttle quadrant does come with a software that you're going to want. Um, you have multiple three position switches here on the mission pack or the control panel, and any of the center positions will not actually register a keystroke unless you have the software installed. So you wanna make sure that you do have that when it becomes available, which you guys, I believe the release date of this particular product is October the 11th of this year. So just about a month away from um, today. Um, so as far as the Viper control panel, I'm actually gonna talk about the bottom part first. I really, really am impressed with the features and the options that they actually chose to put on here. Obviously, it's not a full one-to-one -one replica of all the buttons and switches in the order in the sequence. Um, down here, you have all of your autopilot settings. You have your heading select, your steering select, your pitch hold, altitude hold, and obviously autopilot off. And then you also have a heading uh, um, knob with a push to sync. Okay. Um, you have your jammer on, your laser, your stores configuration, so your uh, Cat 2 or Cat 3 uh, takeoff configuration. So basically, you know, for those of you who don't know, the Viper, if it has, for example, external fuel tanks and a bunch of bombs, it actually goes into a Cat 3 takeoff. Um, I might have this reversed, though it's been a while um, since I've overloaded it like that. But goes in, basically what this switch does is it reduces the uh, input available on the control surfaces, keeping the Viper from being overstressed while under heavy load. Um, and then you have your... E um, ECM, we're going to come back to here to the throttle in just a minute. All of your RWR configurations, your different countermeasure settings, your master arm, the slider, there's a slider here that can be used for whatever you like. Um, the only thing that I will say that I don't like about this entire configuration is the landing gear handle. I felt like all of these feel real nice. They've got really nice, strong, tactile feel to them. You guys can probably hear it. I mean, they are really, really good. Same with the uh, Thrustmaster Warthog. Same thing with all the rotaries. I mean, just real stiff, that real strong uh, tension that I really enjoy on switches. And then you have the landing gear. Now, it is a pull landing gear, which I like, but it's very... Uh, yeah, I don't know how to say it. It's, it's like it's like they all of this is all high quality, and this, I will say, the landing gear feels a little cheap to me. Now, I don't think it is. Um, it just, it feels very weak. It's very loose. It's very easy to lift up and down. Now, the cool part is, is that you do have to lift on it. So you don't have to worry about accidentally bumping it. You know, it doesn't rattle. It doesn't rattle. doesn't rock. doesn't do anything like that. It's not flimsy. It just, I don't know. It, it feels different. And then you have your emergency jettison button. Again, real nice tactile feel to it. 
So a great combination of options can be set here. You have your different uh, um, RWR um, modes that are all right here at the ready. Again, nice tactile feel to it. Really great operation of this. I really, really enjoy this. So again, fabulous work on the Viper uh, control panel. Now this, just like the throttle, can be purchased separately. Um, I would, I believe the throttle you can pick up, let's talk about that real quick. I believe the throttle you can pick up by itself it comes with this plate and the throttle. Uh, I believe it is 349 and I can't remember how much the uh, control panel is by itself. But the whole kit comes out to 529 US dollars. Um, and I would personally recommend getting the whole kit if, if you can do it, obviously, you know, money allowing, budgets allowing. It's definitely worth it to get the whole shebang if you're going to do it. I will say that right off the bat. Now, people have said there isn't any way to mount that. Uh, there kind of is, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Let's go ahead and talk about the throttle now that we've uh, addressed the uh, control panel. This thing is phenomenal. So let's just pull it back. Okay. The lift is gorgeous. The throttle cutoff lock is beautiful. So first off, this is a one-to-one -one replica of the real Viper throttle minus, I believe, this little guy right here. This is a push in and uh, forward and aft directional button here. You also have a, let me just rotate this back a little bit, a, um, a paddle switch under here, which I don't believe is in the real thing. So you do have that option there. Now, I've seen some YouTubers, uh, other reviews, I should say, that are saying that uh, the paddle switch isn't really accessible. I think that really just comes down to the size of your hand. Um, as you guys can see here, I have very large hands. And so I can click it just fine. So it really just depends. If you have big hands, cool. If you're someone who has smaller hands, I believe, you know, your hands may rest about here and then it becomes a little weird to get to it, right? Uh, so it really depends on, on what your hand size is. Talking about all of the rotaries, the axis. The, so this is a axis left and right with a center detent. Your antenna elevation is an axis with a center detent. Okay, you have your mic switch, which is basically just a four-way hat. You have your uh, radar TDC slew, which is your target designator with a push-in function. And also this one, push-in, push-in, and listen to that sound. Sounds absolutely phenomenal. Your speed brake switch, aft momentary, forward locked. Your dogfight switch, your dogfight gun, dogfight missile. And actually, I think I had that reversed. Okay. This is where it gets amazing. So first off, the finish on the metal handle is very, very nice touch. Ooh. It's, I feel like I'm like showcasing a new car, you know, like the price is right. Anyway. Feels very, very nice. It's very, very comfortable. It's it's not jagged, it's smooth. It's very large, very ergonomic. And again, I think when you have the hand size to accommodate it too, it really fits nice. So for example, you have your TDC slew here, but you could very easily come up forward. My wrist is at kind of a weird angle. Let me get, there we go. So I could come down here and manipulate my TDC, but if I want to change my radar elevation, literally it's just a matter of doing something like this, back down the TDC. Maybe bring it down a little bit, lock your target with a push in here, whatever it may be. Coming down to the throttle, this is where it gets awesome. The throttle lock is absolutely incredible. Now here's the drag. So first I'm gonna show you the cool part. The cool part is right now, just like in the real Viper, I can't push the throttle forward. The throttle lock is engaged. So we have to pull the lever back, lift the throttle up over the gate, come in, and now you guys can see the detent right here. Um, it's in the idle position and it's got such a smooth feeling to it. You guys, it's so cool. Literally, I have been sitting here doing this while I was at work today all day long. And then again, there's your lift into the afterburner, bring it back, falls in on its own. So it's a push down, but to get into your afterburners up and over. Now, as with the real aircraft, Something that you're going to have to sort of get in the habit of is making sure that your thumb isn't on anything that can be triggerable while you lift. So you have to make sure that you're lifting with just your fingers. And that might be a drag for some, depending on what your wrist strength is, what your hand size is. In which case, you just have to make sure that 
to go into afterburner that you bring your thumb under and up and over and then it's no problem just to make sure you don't bump anything i think that would be the only hiccup and that's just that that's a that's a use case scenario right but then come back in okay so again we're at idle up and over the gate throttle cut off engines are shutting down and that is the one thing that i wish they had put down here and i might change one of these switches maybe the silent switch i think i'm going to change one of these to the starter because I'd rather be able to start the engine and everything directly from this panel and then be able to bring it over here. Because otherwise, you're still having to use one of these for your start switch and then, you know, which will have to be done with the mouse and then come up over here. So I do wish that they had to add the engine start down here. I think that would have been a cool thing to have here. Obviously, it's one of the most enjoyable parts of any flight simulation is engine start. Engine start is always the part that we do everything else for. It's like, oh, that's going to be cool, right? So the throttle itself, though, is absolutely amazing, you guys. I have been, like I said, doing this all day long. It is so smooth. No stuttering. No sticking. It's using metal bearings. The resolution on it is absolutely gorgeous. No noising. No horizontal rattling. The rattling you're actually seeing, if you watch, is actually the whole thing moving, which we'll talk about in a minute. So if I, no noise at all. Just absolutely, this is one of their best products I think they've ever put out. Like I said in the beginning, I really do think that. Um, and I still have the TPR rudder pedals. There's the Thrustmaster Warthog on the other side. And there is the F-16 or A10 grip. If you guys don't know, they share the same flight stick, uh, the A10 and, and the uh, F16. So, um, which we're going to talk about why the Thrustmaster Warthog is back over there again, because I actually use this on the motion bit. So we're going to talk about this here in just a minute. Uh, we'll come back to that. Now, one of the downsides to the throttle lock, this is, this, this is actually kind of a bumming point. When we are in the lock position as we are now, there is a button depression. However, there is no button depression when you come into idle. Now, what does that mean? That means that in order to map the throttle cutoff, you're going to have to use an if or else um, key binding or uh, as I call it, release. So the key bindings would be when depressed, engine cutoff, when button released, engine idle. Okay, so there are different ways to map that in DCS and in any other simulator. Uh, there are tools out there such as RS Mapper that is still a very functional tool. Uh, the Thrustmaster Target Software, I believe, will also do that. Although I haven't used Target Software in a very, very long time, not since my early days of the A10. Um, uh, Warthog uh, throttle. But um, there are plenty of softwares that will allow you to create uh different scenarios like that release things like that i still swear by rs mapper i use it for anything that anytime that i need to create those kind of functions i use it in rs mapper uh, although dcs has gotten a lot better with it too you can do uh different uh different configurations there as well so that's the only drawback and then like we talked about earlier with the software you need to make sure you have the software installed otherwise in the center positions the switches will have to, um, they, they will have no registry in the center position if you are not using the TQS software. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you get all three positions uh, functional and for that you do have to use the software. So that that's, I mean, I'm, I'm nitpicking when I go into that. Now the final of the coolie, the coolie things here, right, is this guy. This is a chaff flare countermeasures release button. Uh, that is actually, I think it's called the bump button or bump bar. I can't remember what the, what the terminology for it is now, but it's actually in the real thing. So you're in an engagement, you've got your afterburners on, you, you've been fired on, you got a infrared missile coming at you, you know, so you're going to come out of afterburner, pop your flares, and literally it's just, it's super light. You can do it with your pinky, but the idea is to do this, but notice what happens to everything else. Okay. So that is one of the drags, is that if you really want to get into it, do your boom, the whole thing is going to rock and and and, and lift. Okay, so it's very uh, vertically, or the center of gravity is very high. Okay, so that's actually kind of a drag. But let's talk about the next piece of that. People are saying that there isn't any way to mount it, and I don't think that's true. Um, now, I'm going to test this over the weekend. Let's see here. 
Right there, those look like thread holes. Now we do not come with any bolts, but looking into them, I can see threadings down there. And so this weekend, what I'm gonna do is go out and uh, do a little bit of uh, screw shopping and see if I can find the correct size for this. And then we will um, see about mounting it and how that works. And if that's the case, no problem. Now, remember guys, this is a pre-release copy. Now this is a production model is my understanding. This is exactly what you guys will receive. I do hope that they have a way to mount it and that they are going to uh, ship all of the necessary hardware to do so. Um, but, you know, if not Ace Hardware, Home Depot, whatever hardware store you have, I'm sure we'll have the size screws that you need in order to do that. And as soon as I determine what they are, I'll be definitely letting you guys know. All right, so the last piece that I want to talk to you guys about with this review was I told you guys that I put the Thrustmaster Warthog back in after using this. Here's why. Thrustmaster Warthog, in my opinion, is still one of the best HOTAS systems on the market today. It truly is. However, the Viper Throttle. Yes, we don't have two engines anymore. And that, that's, that's probably the only trade-off that I can really give against the Warthog. Um, and, and again, I want to stress, the Warthog is still to this day, at its price point, one of the best HOTAS systems on the market. Okay. Um, and I think this one's better. I think this one's better because the ergonomics of the throttle itself is in my opinion, superior to the Warthog. Um, just everything is in a much more comfortable zone. I really like the way all the different axes are set up. I like the paddle button under here. Um, I've been using this as my recenter button, although I may change it to this little guy here. Only thing is I, I found that I was bumping that one by accident where this one's a little bit more easy to intentionally either dodge or grab. Um, but as far as everything else goes, the ergonomics of this one just seemed a bit better. Now, um, I will also say with that in mind that the Warthog has more hats on it. Um, you have more point of view hats, therefore you have more configurations options um and uh you know for your sensors and, and your different uh, slew controls and things like that there are definitely customizations and configurations that the hotas on the warthog is going to be superior at um even right down i mean especially obviously for the a10 itself uh things like your sensor select sensor of interest switch um and your um your different weapon modes and things like that that are available on the warthog um that are not available on this one however I have found plenty of ways around just about all of that. Um, I do like the different switches here. Um, the rotaries up here have uh, the range knob up here has tons of options. The mic switch can definitely be used as another hat. So I mean, we could always, you know, the, the radio options in DCS even uh, right now are still fairly limited to the point where you can get by probably using something else to bind your different radios to as far as your... Um, radio selection you know you could probably come down here and use like you know this is your nav modes you have tac can nav ils you could probably switch radios here anyway different ideas right um but when it comes to the ergonomics and the feel of the throttle the being able to use the lift gates and bring it back in i mean God, like i said i have been doing this all day long it's just so much fun to do like just holding the damn thing is so much fun um oh we'll talk about the last thing tension so you have an Allen screw right here, and then right in there, there it is, is a little tension screw. Doesn't take much. And it goes, I'll actually show you guys. I really hope I didn't strip it. <laughs> I might have over tightened that one. Oh no, it's working, okay. So it's gotten much, much more loose. I like it just about as stiff as it can be. Um, so I'm going to be tightening that back up. But you can get it to the point where you can tap it with your finger and nothing happens. Or, and uh, everything happens, I should say. So, there we go. And that simply just goes back in here. Got a little holster for it, if you will. And voila. So there it is, you guys. That is the Viper, uh, the Thrustmaster Viper TQS Mission Pack. And this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I'm really impressed with it. The entire thing in, in the combination is, is, 
is right on par. I would I stand by my opinion earlier. I would not get one without the other. Um, if if you're gonna, in my opinion, again, assuming money allows, budget allows, all that good stuff, okay, um, then I would definitely go with the entire shebang, as I think the package together really brings something to your flight simulation experience, especially if you are obviously a fan of the F-16 Viper. Um, so, yeah, like I said, <laughs> I've been doing this all day long. It's extremely well built, extremely um, aesthetically pleasing, um, and the functionality and the uh, clever design of it, I think, really shines and can just work just about anybody's setup. I mean, you guys are seeing me use it as you would even here on the desk. All right. Now, obviously, I'm at a bit of a weird angle because I'm dodging my microphone right here. Okay. But, you know, I mean, you can do right from the desk, you know. Everything is controlled, so you don't even have to be, you know, you don't have to have the full cockpits, the motion pits, all that good jazz. You can just use it even if you're a desk flyer. This is a really awesome set. And if you get the Thrustmaster Warthog or Thrustmaster Viper um, flight stick, then you're set. You've got the you've got the replica. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this very, very useful. We will be doing live footage this week with this guy. You'll see it in action on DCS World. You'll see it in action in Microsoft Flight Simulator this week. Um, so that footage is still coming. I just wanted my first one to be very uh, undistracted. I wanted it to be very black and white. I wanted to give you guys my honest thoughts on it. And like I said, so my only takeaway, my cons are the uh, high center of gravity. You know, if they're going to do that, it needs to extend out further. We need to have some way where, you know, I'm, I'm really not hitting it very hard to get it to rock. Okay, I don't like that. I don't like the cutoff having to be a release function. But in a way, I'm guessing that there's likely a button back here at the end of that axis. Uh, I think I can feel it. Um, so that kind of makes sense. I mean, there's only so many ways to register the idle position. So, you know, even that's not the end of the world. I wish the engine start switch was on the panel. I'd like to see a different uh, landing gear handle. This just feels, it takes away from all of this. This all feels nice, high quality, blah, blah, blah. And this feels kind of, I don't know. You, you guys put it, put in your own words there, but you guys know I'm getting it. And it's not cheap. It doesn't feel crappy or anything. It just feels much less than the feeling you get from touching anything else on this thing. So anyway, as always, guys, stay safe and healthy. Let me know what you guys think down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later, folks.